Welcome to Electron Line. In honor of Pi Day, we're going to do an interesting video on how to find the value of Pi in a very ingenious method. Now here we know that we can find the number Pi by taking the circumference of a circle and dividing by the diameter of the circle, but that's not that easy to do. All the way back in 1733, Comte Buffon, also known as Georges Louis Leclerc Comte de Buffon, came up with a method in which he said that if you drop a bunch of needles on a piece of paper or a floor that has lines on it, we could actually calculate the number pi by figuring out how many of the needles actually hit one of the lines. So what he said was that the probability of a needle hitting a line was equal to two times the length of the needle divided by the number pi divided by the distance between the lines. And if you solve that for the number pi, you come up with this equation. Then relating that to the number tries to the number of hits, we can say that the number pi can be written as two times the length of the needle divided by the distance between the lines times the ratio of the number tries divided by the number hits. Well, if you then set L equals to D, it of course then simplifies the equation. Where did that come from? Well, he figured out that a needle can fall at any particular angle and we can calculate reach of the needle from the center of the needle to the edge of the line there. And that distance is half the length of the needle times the sine of theta. Then if we do this mathematically, we can represent the line then that represents the reach depending upon the angle of the needle from the center of the needle to the edge of the needle. And then if we know the distance from the center to the edge or to the line, we could then say that the probability of hitting a line by needle is equal to the area underneath the curve, which is the reach of the needle divided by the total area from the halfway point to the edge, which is this distance right here. If we then do a quick calculation, we do a quick integration, we indeed come up with 2L divided by pi d. Now let's go ahead and try this. Let's go ahead and drop a bunch of needles on a piece of paper. We're going to do four sets, starting out with 10 needles, then 20, then 30, then 40 needles. Let's see what we get to the number pi when we try that. So let's do the test and then we'll go ahead and do the calculation. Here's my first stack of 10 needles. Now we're going to count to see how many needles actually touch the line. One touch, two touches, three, four, five, six touches. So we have six touches. I'll write down the number six. Here. And now we're going to do it again. But now we're going to throw 20 needles down. And hopefully the more needles we throw down, the more accurate we can estimate the number pi. We have one, two, three, four, five, and 11, six. 12 needles out of 20. So I'll put down 12. And now we're going to toss 30 needles and see what we get. Let's count the ones that hit. So I have one, two, three. So I have 17 needles that hit a line. I'll put down number 17 for 30. And now we're going to try and do 40 needles. One, two, 17, three, four, 18, five, six. 19, 20, 21. 21 needles. Now that we've done the four tests, these are the results that we got. Out of the 10 needles, we got six hits. Out of 20 needles, we got 12 hits. Out of 30 needles, we got 17 hits. And out of 40 needles, we got 21 hits. Let's plug that into the equation and see what we get for the number pi. Of course, we're going to have to use this equation right here because the length of the needles was not equal to the distance between. It was a ratio of 5 to 6. So the number pi is equal to 2 times the length over the distance. That would be 5 divided by 6 multiply times the number of tries divided the number of hits. We have 10 needles and we have 6 hits, so that's equal to, let's see, we need a calculator for that, 2.78. Not the bad result. Remember, the pi to two decimal places is 3.14, so we've got fairly close to that. Let's try the second one. Pi is equal to 2 times the ratio. The ratio is the same, six. so again we got 2.78. What do we get for the third trial? Here with 30 needles, pi is equal to 2 times the ratio we will get 2.94. Well, that's a little closer to the actual number, 2.94. How about the fourth trial? And then we get 3.17. Notice that we're just using 40 needles. We got a pretty decent result. 
Very interesting, maybe with 100 needles or 500 needles or 1,000 needles, you would get a really accurate result. And notice this is just another clever way of finding the number pi.